Hi, I'm Ed Labadee, and I want to share a painting lesson today that features a focus on the process of painting, rather than obsessing with only the finished product. I think that the secret of painting is to enjoy the process. It's so important to take pleasure in the day-to-day -day practice or the doing of the things we want to excel in. Then, the final product or performance becomes a natural extension of that daily process. So, whatever you do in life, try to make it fun, then it's not work. I've been teaching a particular lesson for years, which I've named Creating from Chaos, where I inspire artists to just enjoy the act of creating, visualizing, and then designing and crafting a work to completion. The most amazing thing happens when we just loosen up, learn to trust our instincts, and invent as we go. The final product reveals that journey, and it's often superior to a work that looks like it was labored over, constrained and obsessed with tiny details, with no evidence of spontaneity or invention. A great way to start most anything in life is with a good attitude. In painting, I suggest we begin with a liberating conviction that we're just going to enjoy the pleasures of playing with paint, designing shapes, glazing in colors, and allow ourselves the freedom to take dramatic measures to lift off or repaint if we don't like what we see. It's alarming to me to hear students confess that they're terrified of a blank canvas. So I'm going to start right here and demonstrate a technique to get over that hurdle. I work in many mediums, including acrylics and oils, but today's demo will be with my favorite, watercolor. But no matter what paint you prefer, you simply must begin with an ample supply of paint on a large palette, especially if you're going to paint large. I recommend that you wet your paper with clean water, either entirely or substantially. You can spray it on or brush it on. Let it dry a few minutes and then apply bold washes of color with a large brush. Now there are a million ways to get started on a painting like this, any number of colors. So you decide which palette you prefer. And I promise you that no two will behave exactly the same. Now this only takes a couple of minutes, but I promise you it is so much fun. And the most amazing thing is when you wet your paper down and let these colors mix and mingle in the most unpredictable ways. You simply could not paint with the tiny brush or directly out of a tube to achieve these neutral colors. And now I'm actually painting without using a brush by controlling the flow of the water. And just look at the power of this paint, the granulations, some of the intensity of these bright colors against the white paper. And I introduced some very dark pools of color to get some contrast between lights and darks. You can tip this any number of ways, and there are no two paintings that are ever going to be the same. Or we can stop the process by laying it flat. But the most important thing is to know when to quit. After you've saturated the paper and applied a quantity of paint, force yourself to step away so you don't overwork or destroy the purity of this initial wash. Remember, you'll have plenty of opportunity later to glaze over these areas and adjust colors and values. There are countless ways to manipulate the surface, from scraping out with palette knives or a similar tool or applying a bit of salt or texture just as the painting is setting up.
If you wait until the sheen or the shine of the paper is just diminishing or evaporating, there's a key window of opportunity to sprinkle in a little salt, if you like, for texture. Just ordinary table salt is fine. Or, with a bit of a coarse spray, these little tiny droplets will give you a little bit of texture. You don't have to, it's one of many, many options. this piece around and around in different orientations, but I've settled on this one. It's really important to me to enjoy this creative process of using my imagination. And I can create anything from this beginning. It could be something from underneath the sea to anywhere on the planet, any time of year, any location, and we can go clear out into the cosmos to outer space and planets. I want to develop these shapes to look like buildings, even gigantic high-rises in the distance. And somewhere in the mid-ground, a bridge. Perhaps the Brooklyn Bridge with the big tower there and another one there. And these interesting curved lines uh, that carry the structure of the bridge. So I will do that with building values, but uh, being very mindful of edges. Just a very soft, distant uh, values to keep that sense of atmosphere and fog. And then as I come closer into the foreground to the viewer, uh, a few more carefully selected definitive dark shapes. So I've developed this painting the way I had anticipated with developing these bridge towers, the structure, and the connecting supporting structure. But now, for me, comes the most critical point of the painting, and that is trying to retain the original wash, the fine color granulations, the softness, and the charm of it without putting in too many details. I do need to very selectively now put in some more darks to bring those shapes to the foreground, let the eye go to the midground with the midtones and to the background with a foggy atmosphere. You know, with all great artists, poets, and painters, brevity is the key word. Uh, if you can write a poem with the fewest number of words or paint a painting with the fewest number of brush strokes, uh, I suggest that's a very good way to go. Just a brief recap. I've maintained the earlier washes because I wanted that atmosphere, the vapor, I've put the element of water in as a second element. And all of that is in opposition to the concrete and stone structures here in the bridge and the buildings. I think it's important to put these mixed ingredients into a painting. And there's one more thing that I've added, and that is some activity on the bridge. If you look closely, you'll see some sense of cars and headlights and taillights moving through because that in this painting is a sense of life or action in the painting. But there's just one last ingredient that I think is essential to a painting, and that is a clever title. And I'm thinking Manhattan Memoirs. <laughs>